Hi, this is going to be my last video in the series of short studies in the book of Joshua. But before I read the Joshua passage, let me go back to Deuteronomy chapter 12, verses 28 to 32. Observe and obey all these words with which I command you, that it may go well with you and your children after you forever, when you do what is good and right in the sight of Yahweh your God. When Yahweh your God cuts off from before you the nations which you go to dispossess, and you displace them and dwell in their land, take heed to yourself that you are not ensnared to follow them after they are destroyed from before you, and that you do not inquire after their gods, saying, How do these nations serve their gods? I also will do likewise. You shall not worship Yahweh your God in that way, for every abomination to Yahweh which he hates they have done to their gods. For they bury even their sons and daughters, they burn even their sons and daughters in the fire to their gods. Whatever I command you, be careful to observe it. You shall not add to it nor take away from it. Now let me go to Joshua, chapter 24, verses 14 to 16. And this is uh, Joshua's final speech to the people. Now therefore... Fear Yahweh, serve him in sincerity and in truth, and put away the gods which your father served on the other side of the river and in Egypt. Serve Yahweh. And if it seems evil to you to serve Yahweh, choose for yourselves this day whom you will serve, whether the gods which your fathers served that were on the other side of the river, that is the Euphrates, or the gods of the Amorites in whose land you dwell. For as for me and my house, we will serve Yahweh." So the people answered and said, Far be it from us that we should forsake Yahweh to serve other gods. So Joshua was reminding them of what Moses had commanded. Don't learn the ways of the pagan people that you're moving into. Don't go back to the ways of Egypt or of Mesopotamia, where Abraham came from. Now, Egypt in Scripture, um, it represents the place that we were redeemed from. Metaphorically, it is, uh, it's our lives of sin that we lived before we were redeemed by Yeshua. Sorry, I thought I was being eaten by fire ants for a second. Um, and once you are redeemed, you're not to go back to Egypt. You are to move on, move forward, to work out your, work out your salvation with fear and trembling, as Paul said. As you... As you do that, it's a gradual process of learning the truth, <clears throat> learning how to obey God, learning His ways, abandoning the traditions of men that we inherited from our fathers, uh, those traditions that violate God's commandments in one way or another, and learning God's ways, learning His traditions, or learning new traditions that, that are in accordance with God's commandments. And this means learning to keep the Sabbath, learning to keep God's holy days, learning what it means to love our neighbors and not to love ourselves. All of those things are part of walking out our, our new freedom that, we, we have been, that has been bought for us through Yeshua. And it takes time. You're not going to get there overnight. You're not going to learn everything and do everything exactly right, right away. That's okay. Some people will be tempted to go too far in the opposite direction. And they will start adding to God's law by requiring that people do things that God didn't say. Um, they'll take one passage in Scripture and interpret it out of context or, or out of context of the whole of the Bible and say, you must do this. Like, um, to give one common example, uh, the Messiah is to come in the name of Yahweh. So people will say, if you don't use a name for the Messiah that has Yahweh somehow in it, then you're worshiping the wrong Messiah. Well, that is a total misunderstanding of what, what it means to be in somebody's name or to act in somebody's name. Um, and it's a misunderstanding of Hebrew, historical context, all kinds of things. You have to remember two really important principles to avoid pitfalls like that. One is... Interpret each passage in light of the entire Bible, not just that one passage. Second, remember that the Bible was written for us. It was written for everybody in every century and every culture, but it was not written to us. The Bible was not written to you. It was not written to modern Americans speaking English. 
It was written to ancient Hebrews who understood the wider cultural context of what was going on. And if you don't read it in that light, you're going to end up way out in the weeds somewhere. So just keep walking out according to Scripture. Don't get too excited about getting... Don't get too far out ahead of yourself. Don't put the cart before the horse. Um, don't assume the Bible says more than it does. And don't take the English words too literally because nothing in the Bible was written in English. It was written in Hebrew and Greek and a tiny bit of Aramaic. Just keep walking forward. Learn a little bit every day. Keep putting one foot in front of the other. Don't look back at Egypt. And that Egypt includes the Canaanites, all of the new stuff, the, the new pagan things, the new whatever it is that is contrary to God's commandments, including the commandments to love your neighbor. If you don't have that, I don't care what holidays you're keeping, you're missing the boat. This is Jay Carper from American Tour. Be blessed.